We stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. City Clerk, please take roll. Councilmember Cooper? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Zalewski? Here. Councilmember Goodspeed? Here. Mayor Smith? Here. Councilmember Whitla? Here. Councilmember Pontiac? Here. City Manager? Here. City Attorney? Here. DPW Director? Here. Finance Director? Here. Thank you. Public hearings, we have none. Citizen comment on agenda related items. Will so any citizens that make, would like to make comments on agenda related items? We have none. Consent agenda. All agenda items marked with an asterisk are on the consent agenda and considered by the city manager to be routine matters. Prior to approval of the consent agenda, any member of council may ask an item, may have an item from the consent agenda removed and taken up during regular portion of the meeting. Council agenda items include approval of minutes, cash balances, quarterly financial update, quarterly investment update, notification regarding the next work session, consideration of Manistee World and Arts and Crafts use of Red Smarzik Park. Uh, at this time, council could take action to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll make the motion. I'll second it. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky. I have a second by Council Member Goodspeed. Is there any discussion? Please take roll. Councilmember Cooper? Yeah. Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky? Yes. Councilmember Goodspeed? Yes. Councilmember Woodland? Yes. Councilmember Pontiac? Yes. And Mayor Smith? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Unfinished business, we have none. New business. Consideration of an agreement with the county prosecuting attorney, Manistee County. In November 2015, the city negotiated a one-year agreement with the county prosecuting attorney to prosecute violations of certain city ordinances, codes, and state statutes, which are by definition misdemeanors. That agreement expired December 31, 2016. Staff is recommending an 11-month successor agreement through December 31, 2017. At this time, council could take action to authorize an agreement with Manistee County and a county prosecuting attorney expiring December 31st, 2017. I'll make the motion. Second. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky, uh, a second uh, by Council Member Cooper. Is there any discussion? If I, if I could please, I would like to uh, ask for a little explanation as to why we follow this process and pay a prosecutor for these misdemeanors? Uh, Mayor, maybe I can answer that. Um, the city council, uh, as a home rule city, uh, is adopt, allowed to adopt certain legislation or ordinances uh, that uh, make offenses or um, actions that the public may commit either civil infractions or criminal violations. Uh, civil infractions, uh, ordinances that are, are punishable as civil infractions in the city are handled through my office as the city attorneys. Um, ordinances that are uh, criminal, uh, penalty, have criminal penalties, such as uh, there's some disturbance of the need, uh, <coughs> disturbance of the peace ordinances, uh, there's an ordinance that makes it a criminal offense to be in possession of drug paraphernalia, and then the city also has adopted the uniform uh, traffic code, uh, which includes uh, driving with a suspended license, drug driving offenses, and the like. Uh, those offenses that are criminal violations 
uh, are generally handled by prosecutors. In larger cities, uh, a city attorney's office may handle those types of <coughs> misdemeanor prosecutions. But those would be cities that have uh, attorneys that all they do are criminal prosecutions, and so it's similar to that of a, in our county, the prosecuting attorney's office. What we found is that in smaller communities, it's uh, more economical to have uh, the local prosecuting attorney's office handle these criminal violations. Their staff, that's all they, you know, that's what they handle and that's what they do from writing uh, criminal complaints to preparing warrants that then are authorized uh, for the issuance of an arrest or for search warrants. All of those types of um, requests are something that our prosecutor's office handles on a regular basis. And so to have someone else handle that, uh, you know, certainly would not be cost effective. Um, since, I would guess, probably about 20 years, uh, the uh, city of Manistee has contracted for those types of services with the prosecuting attorney's office. It went back to when Dennis Swain was, uh, I believe, the prosecuting attorney that we first contracted for that. Um, we monitor it and, and are more closely monitoring it with respect to what the city recovers in fines and costs as a result of criminal offenses um, that are city ordinance violations um, and prosecuted and what the city then ends up recovering in fines. Uh, um, we're monitoring that more and going to ask for that to be monitored more with this next contract so we can kind of take a look at <coughs> what the city is receiving in revenue because we're prosecuting these as city ordinance violations versus what it's costing us. Um, but this has been something that we've done for a certain number of years, if not certainly more than a decade. I, I have a question. I'm trying to make it clear in my head. I want to make sure I understand what you're saying. So a misdemeanor committed in Fowler Township would be treated differently than a misdemeanor com committed in the city of Manistee. Filer Township does not has not adopted ordinances that make offenses um, under their ordinance a criminal violation. So they don't have the opportunity to have a local constable that might arrest someone and then ultimately issue a ticket under their ordinance. So someone that commits a drunk driving in Filer Township is going to be charged under state law. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Sager. Is there any other questions or comments? The city clerk, please take roll. Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky? Yes. Councilmember Whitliff? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Councilmember Goodsby? Yes. Councilmember Pontiac? Yes. And Mayor Smith? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of an amendment to the T Mobile site lease at the Industrial Park Water Tower. The City of Manistee leases the space of both water towers to communication companies who provide cellular service. T-Mobile has a current lease at the Industrial Water Park Tower. In order to comply with federal regulations, T-Mobile is proposing a backup power generator at the site along with a propane tank. The lease area would be expanded by 10 square feet and the rent would increase by $60 <coughs> per month. The fire department and city attorney have reviewed and approved the amendment. At this time, council could take action to approve the second amendment to the T-Mobile Central LLC lease agreement and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the agreement. I'll make that motion. I'll second. I have a motion by council member Whitler, a second by council member Whitby. Is there any discussion or comment? Please take roll. Councilmember Goodsby? Yes. Councilmember Pontiac? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. And Councilmember Whitlow? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of authorizing the <laughs> annual St. Patrick's Day Parade. Benevolent <coughs> Protective Order of the Oaks would like to hold the annual St. Patrick's Day Parade on Friday. March 17, 2017. Start time would be 5 p.m. with the staging area at the parking lot on the corner of, of Greenbush and Water Street. The parade would begin at the corner of Greenbush and River Street, traveling west on River Street. This is a new location and sponsor for this annual event. At this time, council could take action to authorize the Elk St. Patrick's Day Parade on Friday, March 17, 2017, 
subject to the appropriate department approvals. I'll move that motion. Make that motion. I'll second. I have a motion by Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky in support by Council Member Pontiac. Is there any discussion? What's, the, what's the appropriate departmental approvals? It's usually run through the police department and the fire department to see if there's going to be any issues. Okay. Yeah, I just, okay. Chief, just Chief Lockman has already right. signed off on it. And, and the Chief normally handles all special event requests. So he's approved and recommending that. Okay. Council this, this is the first year I'll be down River Street, though, right? I think so. So I might yes. uh, Just for clarification, there's no uh, the traffic removal or anything else that's just going to shut traffic down long enough for them to march down the street. And the chief estimates it's going to take about 10 minutes or so. So it's not a burden on the department. Any other comments? It's going to be a long one this time. I know. Max. City Clerk, please take roll. Councilmember Woodla? Yes. Councilmember Pontiac? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky? Yes. Councilmember Goodsby? Yes. And Mayor Smith? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Consideration of the Northwest Michigan Health Department Fitness Trail Grant application for Douglas Park. The City of Manistee has been invited to submit a grant application to the Health Department of Northwest Michigan. The Park Commission has selected the construction of a fitness trail within Douglas Park for this grant application. Total project cost for Phase 1 is $39,000. The grant request is for $20,000. The Public Works Department would provide in-kind service valued at $6,000. The remaining $13,000 match would need to be included in the 2017 to 2018 fiscal year budget. At this time, council could take action to approve a grant application to the Health Department of Northwest Michigan in the amount of $20,000 and commit matching funds to complete phase one of a fitness trail in Douglas Park. I will make that motion. I'll second. I have a motion by council member of Whitliff and support <coughs> by Council Member Goodsby. Is there any questions or comments on this? Um, I have a question about the money part of it. I actually have two questions. The first is about the money. What, are, are we are we going to have to give up anything <coughs> to come up with this money? Well, this would if we do receive the grant, we would put it in consideration in the next budget year. And as, as the uh, DBW has indicated that we can do some in kind and at staff today we discussed uh, the possibility of submitting it to the local revenue sharing board for, uh, for matching our grant. So if we get the grant, we're going to have to come up with a match, whether it's our funds out of pocket, whether it's in kind or if we submit a grant to the uh, local revenue sharing board. My next question or maybe a concern. We attending the um, Parks Commission meetings, there seems to be an ever-growing need for <coughs> parks maintenance and time to keep up the parks. Now we're going to be adding a, another a park or another um, something that's going to be maintain maintenance and time. Do we have the time to do that? So can somebody address that? Uh, DPW didn't indicate there would be any, any additional work that they couldn't incorporate into their schedule. As I understand the information on this, the uh, application is due by the 10th of this month. Right. And, and then it's a process of waiting to see if we're uh, accepted for the grant. Exactly. We had the issue of uh, given a letter of intent that we intended to apply for a grant uh, pending authorization by council. So we would we would uh, submit the grant, and I don't know exactly what the time frame is in terms of awards. Okay. And and we're in front of the uh, revenue sharing board grant request period. That we missed that deadline because we didn't know if we had the authorization. We might be able to get it in yet. But we don't know. If not, we'll do it in the fall. Okay. Because what we would do is 
uh, we have to wait until the, the new year, the new budget year for us, because we have nothing allocated right now. Okay. Okay. Any additional questions or comments? City Clerk, please take roll. Councilmember Pontiac? Yes. Councilmember Goodspeed? Yes. Councilmember Cooper? Yes. Councilmember Wendler? Yes. Mayor Potem Zelensky? Yes. And Mayor Smith? Yes. Motion approved. Thank you. Uh, notices, communications, and announcements. Uh, a report from Republic Services. A regular part of each council meeting is a report from a cooperating agency, organization, or department. At this time, Mr. Matt Ballett will report on the activities of Republic Services and respond to any questions the council may have regarding their activities. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, on behalf of Republic Services, as always, we'd like to thank the community for your support and give you our annual update for your review. Uh, the time period for this update is July 15th through June of 16. As we know, Republic Services has been a community partner for many, many years. We operate the landfill over in Strong Township, uh, just outside the city limits, uh, which also uh, includes a gas uh, processing facility for the landfill gas that's generated at that. Uh, hauling organization, of course, in our offices and customer services. In Northern Michigan, Republic Service uh, employs 278 team members, um, which represents uh, three different uh, landfill operations. The current contract uh, became effective uh, July 1st, 2010. It uh, was extended uh, July 1st of 2015. It's on a current 60-month term cycle. The exciting part of 2016 is we did a transfer from recycle bins to recycle carts in April. Um, there's roughly about 115 homes that participate in the recycling program. They pay a subsequent fee of $6.75 a month for that service. Uh, the 96 gallon carts are still done on a bi-weekly collection. Uh, gives an added convenience and ease for those residents. At the bottom of this chart you'll see the recycling tonnages. Uh, for both of those. The uh, commingled recycle tonnage uh, is your curbside program, which is actually participating, uh, or which is actually functioning very well at about 51 pounds per home, um, compared to the industry average at 27 pounds. The recycling drop-off sites uh, was an interesting trend this year, which follows a larger conversation that we've been having. Um, Last year, you did 55 pulls of the large recycle container at the drop site. Um, this year, it was 64 pulls, so we went up 10 extra additional containers. However, the tonnage weight went down 367 tons. The reason for that is what's known as the evolving ton. Not to get you far into the weeds, it just means if you look back historically in the year 2000, 48,000 water bottles made one ton of weight. Uh, if you fast forward that to 2015, it now takes 92,000 water bottles to make that same one ton of weight. And that's because of the light weighting of the plastic when you hold a bottle and crinkle it and all the water jumps out. It's because there's no plastic left in the bottle. So that has been one of the big changes. You'll also see that same evolution in your Tide containers. You used to have a nice HDPE Tide bottle. That switched to the pods, which was in an off-spec PET um, container. Uh, PET is a form of plastic, much like your water, and now that's going off to flexible packaging. So those things keep on driving those weights down, but the volumes keep on going up because a water bottle is still the same volume dimension, just the weight of it goes away. Any questions on that? No? Awesome. Quick review of the tons. 2013 was your peak at 213. You went to 206, now you're at 211, staying pretty flat. Uh, nothing uh, extreme to talk about there. Your costs actually went down a little bit again in 2016. Um, so if you look at uh, 2014 and 2016, pretty close. Um, jumping on to the spring trash haul, last year we did do a collection event in the community. Uh, this year we're back to the bulky item again. 
Uh, next year we'll do a spring collection again. So it goes on and off every other year cycle. And that is my short and sweet summary version for you guys so you can enjoy your neighbors. Questions, comments, concerns? On the, with the city recycle center mm -hmm. that we have on, in the industrial park, mm -hmm. is there any issues with the materials that you get out of that? No. So the processing facility that's doing that for us has not uh, raised any concerns or comments about the materials. <laughs> Drop centers on occasion do have abuse that happens uh, between DPW and Republic. We do clean those up as quickly as possible and make them go away so that it doesn't encourage other residents to do so. Um, but you've seen a lot. There's been a big reduction in the electronics. You used to see a lot of TVs at drop sites. Those are pretty much done now. Um, so it's, it's not a lot that I've seen. Jeff, you haven't seen much lately? No, no it's, it's cleaned up a lot uh, yep. since... The new site uh, helps dramatically. The new site, the uh, yep. cameras, signage, lights, uh, potential fines yep. that, uh, that are out there. So. Yep. All those things do wonders to, to help keep people in mind. Thank you. You're very welcome. Uh, the once a month, uh, first of the month, bulk item pickup. Are mm -hmm. you experiencing any difficulties with that, or is that manageable? No, nope, that's manageable. Uh, seems to be good participation. Um, occasionally in the snow periods you, you have a little bit of issue every once in a while if you get a heavy snowfall you might bury a mattress on the side of the road but this year has been pretty light haven't had that issue really uh, snowmobilers don't like it but trash guys love it lack of snow thank you very much thank you Concerns and comments. Um, at, at this time, uh, Mr. Whitliff, did you have? Yes, I, I would like to introduce um, Robert Carpenter, the new director uh, of the Armory Project, and the construction manager, Gary Byrne. Is it? Byrne. Yeah. Byrne, I'm sorry. <clears throat> All right. Thank you for uh, coming tonight. Thank you for having us. It's uh, certainly a pleasure. pleasure to be here again. It's been a while for me. Um, we were involved in this, have been involved in this project for nearly five years and to start with a vision group of people who are interested, concerned with the ongoing development of uh, the youth in our community and, and we, we're seeing a real need and, and a, a trend that we didn't like and, and so we, we felt compelled uh, as, a, as a group to kind of do something and it started, as you may well know, we, we've been here in the past, we were looking at building a building on 12th Street at the bottom of the hill of faith by the church that across from the football field. And during that process, as you know, the armory became available. And it was kind of a unique thing because the armory was really everything that we were looking to build on 12th Street. And so we, we saw that as a real opportunity, not only to preserve a building that everyone is familiar with here and has, holds a lot of sentimental values, as we certainly come, have come to know over the last few months, um, but it offers everything that we really needed in terms of the building. And uh, so we were really felt privileged and, and honored to be, to be able to be a part of that, to be able to purchase the building. And, uh, and now we're in the process of upgrading, updating the building. Um, <clears throat> right now we're, we're looking at re bringing, basically bringing everything up to code. The building was built in 1956, was built to some standards that we can no longer apply by. So, because of the change of ownership and usage, uh, we, we're now bringing that building up to code in terms of all the ADA compliances, uh, changing some doors and bathrooms, adding a ton of bathrooms, adding fire suppression to the building, and doing some major upgrades of that, that nature. We're not changing the footprint of the building. We're not changing the gymnasium or anything like that. Pretty much keeping the, the structure as it, as it stands, but able to make all the, the changes that we need, you know, plumbing, bathrooms, and so on, to that existing facility. So it's really working out nicely for us, and anyone that's been involved with the armory for over the last 60 years, when they walk in, they, they certainly would feel quite at home. However, the intent and the use of that building is, is what we're really excited about, and that's what we kind of want to share with you a little bit about that tonight, just to introduce not only ourselves, but you to the project. And, and we look forward to do that. Robert Carpenter is our executive director of the Armory Youth Project. And I'm going to turn this over to him right now just to kind of tell you a little bit about what we have going on, what we have planned. I 
thank you guys for having us here tonight. Really appreciate it. And uh, we've been here for about a month. Uh, my wife and I moved here from PA, and we have received such a warm welcome from Manistee. And it's exciting for us, especially, to see how a community has really come together to recognize a need for students, uh, the needs that they face in their daily life, that we need an intentional effort to move forward. And that's what we're planning. Uh, right now, we're going through programming, and we're trying to come up with different programs that are going to directly meet the needs of these students. Some of the ones that we're looking directly at are for tutoring, uh, after-school programs with sports, being able to utilize the gym especially. And then we're also looking to be able to build in the kids' lives just in being able to be mentors. Um, one of the big needs as I've gone around through all of the different schools in the community is just the need for more um, services for students dealing with mental health especially. Um, there's just a lot of students struggling deeply uh, with different needs and we want to provide a good, safe resource for them where they can enter in and be able to be mentored and also referred to the appropriate services. So we're really excited for as we move forward. Um, our projected opening date is this June. Um, so we're hoping to open up and then be able to have stuff going on for Forest Fest as well, uh, especially as I continue to learn the many things that go on in the community. Um, but I really look forward to working with you and working with the community at large and the county at large uh, to see how we can really impact these kids. Um, I don't have business cards yet, as we just changed our name from 12th Street Youth Project to Armor Youth Project, um, but I will leave a little note uh, with my contact information with that as well. Uh, thank you guys for having us. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Any questions you might have of us? No, I, I appreciate it very much coming tonight, uh, taking time away from your families. Um, just to introduce yourself. Uh, it is a wonderful project, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Citizen comment. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on municipal services, activities, or areas of city involvement. Citizens in attendance must be recognized by the mayor for comment limited to five minutes. Letters submitted to council will not be read. Are there any citizens that wish to address the city council? Not uh, officials and staff. City clerk. City manager. Your Honor. City attorney. Your Honor. City finance director. I have um, two things I'd like to bring to council's attention. Um, first of all, as you might have seen in the newspaper today, we've um, the Ramsdale has announced uh, a new executive director. The Ramsdale Regional Center for the Arts Board hired Xavier Verna. He'll be starting February 15th. And there is going to be an open house for Xavier over at the Ramsdale on February 23rd from 5.30 to 7.30. So I would welcome uh, any city council members, members of the community to come over and, and meet Xavier and uh, get a chance to, to know him. Uh, again, it's February 23rd from 5.30 to 7.30. The second thing I wanted to address with council is um, the recent downgrade that the city had on its water and sewer bond rating. S&P maintains a rating on our revenue bonds, and uh, we recently got a, a notice that they downgraded us from an A-plus to an A, which is still an investment-grade rating. And the sole reason for the downgrade had nothing to do with the financial performance of the utility. In fact, they said it's doing very well financially, has strong management policies, and um, has a strong fiscal strength. But S&P basically changed their rating formula or their rating matrix, so they look at some different criteria they weight some criteria differently than they had in the past. And their report says that was the reason for the downgrade. So that nothing has fundamentally changed with the city's utility. They just changed their, uh, their rating metric. But I wanted to let council know about that. Any questions on that? Thank you. Thank you. Public Works Director. Nothing, Your Honor. Councilman. Nothing, Your Honor. Also, thank you. Nothing. Um, just a couple things. I uh, just want to congratulate the, um, the crew with the snowshoe stampede uh, that was held over the weekend at the VFW. They raised over $21,000 uh, for the fight of cancer. And also with the seven new members with the um, Manistee Catholic Central Hall of Fame, congratulations on your inductee, induction. Excuse me. That's all. Your Honor, I do have something. Um, Tom, who was doing our videotaping for, I think, about the past 16 years. And was having some real medical issues, and I think we should kind of keep him in our thoughts. Okay. Okay. No, nothing, Your 
Okay. Um, I, the uh, Sarah Hughes from the uh, Council on Aging uh, has contacted me, and uh, Council Member Whitliffe will be the first to participate in uh, a monthly activity that she would like to uh, have a council member um, attend lunch in a, a small welcome get to know session before. This is for an individual uh, council member to do that. So she's given me uh, a series of dates um, and hopefully to do this uh, once a month. The person would need to be there at 11 o'clock to meet with some of the folks in Howard. Sir, Howard. How, Howard, okay, yeah. Um, so um, if, if you're interested in, uh, in doing that, let me know. And, uh, and I've already spoke with a couple of people and we're scheduling you for, uh, for a day. You do need to bring $3 for lunch. So <laughs> no free lunch. There's no problem with that, is it, George, individual yeah. council members? No, it's any problem at all. Uh, and, and the uh, event with the uh, League of Women Voters is, uh, is set for the 9th of March from 5 to 7. And the city manager's office has uh, arranged for posting or has it's cheaper. Right? Already posted it on the, on the city okay. website. Yeah, we'll, keep it, we'll keep it simple. I'll just know who's there, uh, what time we start, what time we finish, and, and give that to uh, Michelle and have to take care of our meeting minutes. Yes. Uh, and other than that, thank you for, for the people that have come. Thank you, uh, the public, for uh, your presentation. Uh, and welcome to the community. We look forward to, uh, to the 12th Street. I mean, what was the 12th Street, now the, uh, the Armory uh, Teen Activity Center. There. And with that, uh, we have consideration of adjourning to a closed session, uh, annual city manager evaluation. City Manager Thad N. Taylor has requested a closed session this evening as permitted by the Open Meeting Act, Section 8A, for discussion on the City Manager's annual evaluation. At this time, Council could take action to proceed to closed session under Section 8A of the Michigan Open Meeting Act. I'll make the motion. Thank you. We have a motion by Council Member Fitzpeed, a second by Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky. Any discussion? Take roll, please. Councilmember Cooper? Yeah. Mayor Pro Tem Zelensky? Yes. Councilmember Goodspeed? Yep. Yeah. Mayor Smith? Yes. Councilmember Woodla? Yes. Councilmember Pontiac? Yes. Motion approved.